Hey everyone, today we're on my farm in central Illinois and I'm going to show you how I take inventory of bucks on my property and all the properties I hunt using a technique called rope scrapes. Now I don't want to take credit for this, I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the first guys that I ever heard talk about using these rope scrapes was Gene and Barry Wenzel uh, several years back. Uh, I've kind of taken their idea and run with it a little bit, put a few twists of my own to it, and I'm going to share them with you here today. So let's start with some of the finer points and things you need to keep in mind as you're setting up your rope scrapes. First of all, location, location, location. Location is the key. Uh, where I'm at today, we're gonna hang a rope scrape from this tree branch right here. Behind me is a field of real world bedding grasses. And then just beyond about 20 yards in front of me is a food plot. So we're in kind of a travel corridor between the bedding area and the food. Uh, you can see we're right along this edge. Uh, the bucks travel this edge anyway. And what we want to do is we want to get them to stop right here so we can set a camera up and we can get a picture of every buck that's using this travel route. And if your rope scrape is in the right location, you should be able to get a picture of every buck on your property with one camera. Now, I'm going to show you some of the finer points now of setting up that rope scrape. But remember, location is the key. If, that, if your rope is in a bad location, you're probably not going to get very many pictures. You're definitely not going to get a picture of every buck on the property. But if you're in the right spot, you're going to see every buck that's on that place. So let's start by talking about the rope. I like to use either a three quarter inch or a one inch hemp or manila rope. Um, it's really important that you fray the end. Um, what I like to do is use a couple of hog rings on this end to keep the whole rope from unraveling. But you can also just put a piece of wire around that rope and, and twist it tight and then fray the, you know, like the bottom eight or 10 inches or so. Uh, the wire or the hog rings will keep the whole rope from unraveling. So then w once you got the rope, you want to go to the, the branch where you're going to hang that rope to get it the right height. You want, you're going to want the end of that rope to be about two feet off of the ground. So uh, what I like to do is just carry the whole rope with me, come up to the branch where I'm going to hang it, see how much rope I, I'm going to need, and then I tie a knot in it. So once I've got a knot in that rope, I, I will cut, cut the end away. That leaves me the piece that I'm going to attach to the tree branch, and I will wire it below that knot. And that way, the deer cannot pull it past that knot and pull it off of the branch. So once I've got the rope cut to length for the particular branch where I'm going to hang it, I'll use a piece of wire. I like to double the wire, use a piece of uh, um, aluminum or galvanized wire that's not going to rust away in a hurry. Um, you want to go below that knot and then wire it up to the tree branch. So now let's talk about the timing of when we should be doing this. Today it's late July, as you can tell probably from watching this video, I'm sitting here sweating. It's hot as can be. What I've found is the best time to hang these ropes is right after season in the winter time. Um, for whatever reason, that rope needs to, to weather. I'm sure it's holding scent, but I've just had a lot better success by hanging these ropes way early, like in the winter, several months before hunting season, um, in the spot that I want them and giving them a chance to weather. So here we are at the end of July, you know, and I've just hung this rope. I, I still think there's a pretty good chance these deer are gonna use it. Uh, I mean, we're still, what, August, September, we're two months away from hunting season. Um, as long as that rope gets plenty of rain and gets the scent washed off of it, I think we'll be fine. But it, make no mistake, it would have been better if I'd have done this a few months ago you know, before things greened up in the spring, back in the winter when I was doing my winter scouting, my postseason scouting, or some of my early habitat projects, that's the time to really hang these ropes. But uh, we're gonna make do with what we got today. So let's say we've hung this rope back in the winter time, and now it's summer, everything's greened up. It's not yet time to put scent on the rope or put our cameras on it, but there's still one step left that you need to do in the summertime. I like to come in with a spray bottle of Roundup or some type of herbicide to kill this vegetation under this rope. 
And the reason for it, it makes it a whole lot easier when you come back later to hang your camera and to scent the rope to create a scrape there. I want to spray about a three foot to four foot diameter circle around this rope and kill all that vegetation. So now let's assume that this rope has been here since winter. It's been a couple months or so since we sprayed this vegetation under it. This vegetation is all dead. I like to come back about anywhere from about the first of September to the middle of October. And uh, what I'll do is I'll bring a garden rake with me. Uh, I'm wearing rubber gloves and, and rubber boots, trying to stay as scent free as possible. I'll come in with my rake and I'll rake away that dead vegetation clear down to the bare dirt underneath that rope. Um, this creates the scrape area. And you know, ironically, what I've found is once a rope has been there for a couple years, you don't even have to do this step because the bucks will open it up before you get back and get a chance to. It usually starts about the time they start shedding velvet, the bucks start getting aggressive, they start sparring a little bit. That's when they start hitting these, uh, these rope scrapes, but they'll really just continue to build up until the rut. But uh, you make sure you get that scent on early. So now that we've got all that vegetation cleared under the rope, it's time to put our scent on. And the best scent that I've ever found, hands down by far, is called Smokey's Deer Lures, uh, made by a, a trapper from West Virginia. He makes several different deer lures, and I've used them all on the ropes. Every one of them has worked just fine. Uh, he's even got one made just for rope scrapes. It's called Wicked Wicks, Smokey's Wicked Wicks. And here's the thing about scenting your rope. You wanna put plenty on because you only really need to do it one time. If it's in the right spot, the bucks find it, you send it one time and stay away from it. Set your camera, you know, 10, 15 yards away and don't ever come up to that rope or that rope scrape again. Keep it free of human scent. Um, so this is a four ounce bottle. I typically like to put at least an ounce on this rope. Um, again, anytime from early September to about mid-October, Send it one time after you've cleared the ground, put your trail camera up, and then stay away from that scrape. You can come in and check your trail camera from time to time, um, but don't linger around that scrape leaving human scent. If you're in the right spot, I'm telling you, you're gonna get a picture of every buck on your property right here at this spot. So let's do a quick recap of all the important points here. First of all is location. You need to be in a travel area that the deer are already using. Out on an edge of the cover is perfect, especially if you can get between a bedding area and a food source uh, where those deer are gonna be traveling a lot, following an edge to get from one to the other, that's perfect. Um, you can use these near your tree stands. Uh, I've only got a couple locations where I do that simply because uh, it's a highly intrusive approach uh, to hunting and I'm probably the most conservative deer hunter you're ever gonna talk to. I just don't like to put any pressure around my stands whatsoever if I can keep from it. But I'll put these rope scrapes out on the edges on the properties I hunt and I can inventory what bucks are on that property uh, and give me a good idea if there's something there that I, I want to target. Um, I'll know he's on the property and I can go in and hunt those stands. But uh, start out with a good location. The next thing is the rope. Um, I like to use three quarter inch or one inch hemp or uh, manila rope. Uh, either one seems to work fine. Uh, timing, I like to hang those ropes in the winter time right after season closes and allow those ropes to weather the entire summer, get all the scent off of them and everything. I'll make one return visit to that rope in the summertime once everything is greened up good. I'll spray that vegetation under that rope in about a three to four foot diameter circle and that's all I do. When I come back to put my camera up anywhere from early September to mid-October, I will bring a garden rake with me It'll, that dead vegetation will be real easy to rake away from under that rope. Once I get that raked away, I use about an ounce uh, at least of smoky scents. Uh, put it on that rope, start up high and just let it drip right down uh, the rope. It doesn't matter which of smoky scents you use, I've used every one of them and every single one of them have worked great. Uh, these are not urine based scents, they are gland scents. Um, he's even got one just for rope scrapes called Wicked Wicks. Uh, if you go to Smokey's Deer Lures website, uh, you'll be able to find that real easy. Uh, tell Smokey I sent you, by the way. But there's, I've never found a better way to inventory bucks on a property. 
If you've got your rope scrape in the right spot, you can put one camera up on this scrape and you can get a picture of every buck that's on that property. As I mentioned at the beginning, this rope scrape is actually on my property. I'm gonna leave this, this rope scrape here. I'm gonna put a camera on it this fall. And on my social media, I'm gonna be sharing pictures that were taken right here on this rope that you see me uh, prepare today in late July. I'm pretty confident that, I wish it was hung several months ago, but I'm still pretty confident that the deer are gonna hit it. Uh, we still got two months before hunting season. A few rains ought to wash the scent away. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, like this video. We're gonna put a link there in the description of this video to uh, Smokey's Deer Lures so you can find that easy enough. And uh, you know, follow along as I post pictures that were taken right here at this spot.